Fire is one of the greatest hazards at sea. No two fires are exactly alike in location, intensity, cause or effect. Therefore, it is the responsibility of the master and his emergency organization to assess, with minimum delay, the best possible action to take when an incident arises. In this film, we will examine command and control from the bridge. We look at the role of the master the likely to affect the ship's power. and the information he needs to make considered judgments. There are three stages in the development of a fire that a ship and its crew must prepare to deal with. The initial stage, when a fire first starts. The developing fire. You happy with the gear? Okay. Right. And the fully developed fire. The first two stages should happen automatically. All the master has to do is to monitor the situation and consider his actions if it reaches the third stage. The master must develop a strategy that will include boundary cooling, boundary starvation and ventilation control. Once the fire is contained, he can plan his attack. His options are just to keep the fire contained, use fixed installations to put it out, or apply other means of control. Is the fire likely to affect the ship's power? The priority is always the safety of the crew. Although every fire is different, many of the procedures will be common to all the incidents. A fire has broken out in the stores area of the ship. Attention! There's a fire in the lower bridge deck. All crew must report immediately to their station. Two crew members who sounded the alarm tackle the fire with one of the hose reels. Where possible, and if the area is clear of personnel, the master stops the vent fans and closes the fire dampers by remote control. Not only does this prevent air feeding the fire, but also hinders the fire spreading through the trunking. Under the revised SOLAS convention, all new ships will have protected trunking so that selective ventilation may be continued. However, sometimes the fire will jump a deck and reappear a few decks higher up. This risk must be taken into account. The master instructs that the engines are put on standby. Stand by engines. Yes, Captain, they are lifted. Yeah. This keeps power available for any change of speed or position in relation to the wind. The engine room informs the master that the fire pumps are working and up to full pressure. And that the emergency pump and generator have been started too. On some ships, the master may use plans of the vessel to assist in understanding the location of the fire and the problems if it were to spread to other areas. A log of reports, the time and the action taken must be kept. Two men now halfway down the bridge deck, they are reporting that there is increased smoke. Reports come to the bridge from all mustering groups. Uh, keep me informed and the master learns that two people are missing. What's the condition like down there? He gives that information to the on-scene commander. At the scene of the fire, the men who sounded the alarm fight the fire with a hose reel. In the chart room, 
the master considers the course of the ship and the relative wind. The master contacts ships in the vicinity and the coast radio stations. If necessary, he will send out an urgency signal or a distress call. At the fire, the water from the small hose is having little effect. The smoke and steam force the two seamen to withdraw. Outside, the firefighting party is entering with hose and lifelines. Once the fire is covered by hoses, the master and the attack party leader discuss what selective ventilation may be carried out. Well, if the smoke gets any thicker, we'll need some selective ventilation. The firefighters come to the fire zone and enter the blazing area. Hoses turned to spray. Depending on the vessel, the master orders the support party, standing by the boats, to lower them to the embarkation level and prepare them in readiness to abandon ship. Extra blankets and water are brought up. The plug is fixed in position and the engine checked. Sarts, the EPERM and portable VHF sets are placed in one of the boats. The bridge is protected by fireproof doors. Nevertheless, the master must always have an alternative command post if it becomes necessary to evacuate the bridge. The firefighters tackle the fire and it's now responding to their efforts. However, it is not yet under control. You should put the support team onto boundary cool. The master advises the leader of the emergency party to check various areas to prevent possible spread of fire. Other teams begin to boundary cool and boundary starve the fire by removing flammable material from adjacent bulkheads. Check and report any hot spots on the forward bulkhead. The master tells the engine room to check for hot spots and be prepared to cool it and to prepare to cool. Engine room personnel have an escape route through the shaft tunnel in a cargo ship or steering flat in some ships so that they can reach open deck. Because heat rises, a horizontal escape route away from the fire zone is always preferred. Where large amounts of water can accumulate in a passenger ship or cargo ship, stability becomes a major consideration. The free surface effect of accumulated water and the additional weight at various levels can seriously affect stability. Surplus water should be directed as low in the ship as possible for pumping out. The master will have advance information regarding stability effects of volumes of water at each deck level. At the fire, the blaze is under control. Firefighters damp it down thoroughly. When the fire is extinguished, the leader of the emergency party reports this fact to the bridge. The master informs shipping, coast radio stations, the owners and the ship managers accordingly. At the fire area, a continuous watch will be kept against re-ignition and the firefighters will go in and remove any smoldering material.
Had there been any casualties, the master would report this and make the necessary arrangements to evacuate the injured crewmen from the ship. If this incident occurred whilst the ship was in port, it is the shore fire brigade that would normally take over the responsibility of firefighting. Even so, the ship's emergency organization handles the vital early stages, liaising with the fire brigade and harbor authorities. To summon this assistance, it is essential to know the necessary procedures this information is given to the master on arrival and must be clearly displayed on the ship. It is a requirement to have the fire wallet available. The fire wallet contains a general arrangement plan of the ship showing full details of the layout, a safety equipment plan giving details of the hydrants and the fixed and portable firefighting equipment a cargo stowage plan in cargo ships, and also stability information. A copy of the wallet should be kept on the bridge. It's a requirement that it's also available at the point of entry to the ship. The port fire brigade will need to know if anyone is missing. Thus, it's important to have a roll call and keep an accurate record of who is aboard and who is ashore. The fire brigade will also expect support from the master and ship staff. The incidents we have seen were varied. They could have happened on a different ship. Container ships, railroads, passenger ships and so on or they might have occurred whilst the ship was in port or in dry dock when half the crew were ashore. Whatever the circumstances, the same basic principles of command and control apply. Time is short when a fire starts. The situation demands quick and decisive action. The foundations for such action lie in efficient organization. That requires mutual confidence, which is the result of thorough training. In a critical situation, each party must know what to do and know that they can depend on others for their own safety. Above all, they must be confident that they can rely on the orders they receive. That is command and control in action. Uh, keep me informed. This video tell program is part of a series of five on firefighting at sea. Program one deals with fire prevention. Program two with basic firefighting. Program three with command and control at the incident. And program five with machinery space fires.